We can use GitHub's web interface to create a remote repository. But we still need a way to work with our local repository and keep our local and remote repositories in sync. GitHub Desktop can do just that. It provides a user interface to help us clone a GitHub repository, commit files locally, compare file versions, and push our commit history back to GitHub for safekeeping. It's available on Windows or the Mac. Before we can use GitHub Desktop, we need to install it. I'm looking at the recipes GitHub repository we just created. Let's open another browser tab and type in desktop.github.com. That takes us to the GitHub Desktop page. It already knows what platform we are using, so click the button to download the application. If the suggested download isn't correct, check out the provided links. The application is then downloaded and ready for you to install. If you want to try out GitHub Desktop with me throughout this lesson, install it now. I already have it, so I won't install it again. Note that GitHub Desktop does not install Git. If we want to use the Git command line, we have to install Git separately. We'll do that a bit later. GitHub Desktop does have a version of Git built in, so we can use it from there. When the installation is complete, GitHub Desktop walks you through a process to authorize access to your GitHub account. Let's close this tab and walk through the authorization process on the slides. We want to connect our GitHub Desktop installation to our GitHub account. That way, we can clone GitHub repositories and sync changes between our local and remote repos. Don't skip these steps, or you won't be able to use GitHub Desktop to communicate with GitHub. First, it will ask you to sign in to GitHub. Clicking the Sign In button takes you to your GitHub account. If you are not already logged into your GitHub account, it will ask you to log in. If you are logged into your GitHub account, it may ask you to authorize GitHub Desktop and ask your permission to open githubdesktop.exe. Click the Open button, and it returns you to GitHub Desktop. Next, it wants to configure Git with a name and email address. This is the name and email Git will use when you commit your files. Click the first option to set the name and email address from your GitHub account. Otherwise, you can configure it manually. Click Finish, and the configuration is complete. If you have issues with this authorization or configuration process, see the lesson links at the end of this lesson for more information. GitHub Desktop then displays a page to help you get started. Because we authorized it, GitHub Desktop knows about our GitHub repositories and lists them. It even provides an option to clone our new recipes remote repo right from here. But we'll clone the repository from GitHub. Let's do that next.